Hi, I'm Cadet Porter. I'm Cadet Hamilton. And I'm Cadet Williams. And today we will, we will be presenting you with our group's solutions on how to attempt to solve the refugee radicalization within youth conferences. The J5, J8 general offense shall leverage internal and external assets through youth comms to lessen the risk of radicalization by focusing on the integration of the refugees into the society of the host country, the security around the refugees, funding for the refugee solution, education for the refugees in the host country, and the expected time that this solution is blocked. Security holds the greatest value in our system because we are a military organization and the security of our assets and our people and the refugees will hold the greatest value to us. Funding is of next importance because if we have no funds to execute a system or execute our system, then no action can be taken to attempt to re re reduce refugee radicalization. Time frame is important because we need to get a clear picture on how long we expect the system to last so that the successors of command can be properly briefed on how to handle the systems that are already in place. Integration and shelter hold equal importance in our system because how a refugee impacts the local economy and how they're housed hold equal value to us. Education is also important because if we can keep the young minds of the refugees busy, then they'll be less likely to seek out radical behaviors and also provide themselves local communities with a with that refugee. Once we generated what our values were, we used this Wiki's morphological box in order to generate our, the possible solutions that we could have. We used the values up top, and then given the options listed down below, we were able to generate 288 possible solutions. So with integration, the options are multi-sided integration, meaning that the refugees have jobs that society and are able to move up and down the social ladder. Minimum wage job, which is just a short-term solution, or they live within the country, which means that in the refugee camp, that is all they do. They simply live within the refugee camp and do nothing else. For funding, it's where the funding is coming from. So the funding either comes from the host country, the European Union, the United States, or the home country, the country where the refugees came from. For shelter, uh, permanent shelter is housing for the refugees, permanent housing within the state. They live within tents in the refugee camps or they're uh, living within refugee centers, which can be comparable to homeless shelters within many major cities. For security, uh, the local police force will provide security, the state army, UCOM soldiers, or a full-on United States intervention. For education, a continual education means that the refugees are given ability to achieve a collegiate level education and continue learning and building upon that education. While the education threshold will simply cap off uh, the funding for the refugees at a simple GED level or a grade 12 equivalent in the United States. The time frame is rather self-explanatory with the time frame that we expect the solutions to last being 5, 10, 15, or 20 years. Once we generated our those criteria down. For this, we use a feasibility screening matrix, which uses our values that we generated before and assigns criteria to them, with which we compare against all the possible solutions. If any particular solution receives one no-go, given the different criteria that we assign it, one no-go for the solution generates a no-go for that entire solution. For time frame, our criteria was anything that had the time frame being under 10 years was given a no-go. For funding, any funding that came from the home country was given a no-go. For security, anything outside the European Union was given a no-go to include the U.S. And societal integration, if the refugees were not looking for a job, if they were simply living within the host country, then that solution also received a no-go. Out of our seven possible candidate solutions, we managed to narrow it down to three, candidate solution two, four and six. So candidate solution two, the funding comes from the United States and uh, our shelter will be permanent as is we expect uh, refugees to live in residential areas and more permanent homes. Uh, our education will be continual, which means that we will have a system in place to help the refugees pursue higher education, whether that be through, uh, whether that be through things like scholarships, 
or other government programs. Uh, the security is provided by the host nation army, which um, hopefully will take some of the stress off of the budget that comes from the United States, so it can go into programs like education and uh, shelter. And later on to integration, so the full societal integration means that we will have a program in place that allows refugees to hopefully get fast-tracked into jobs that have some semblance of uh, opportunity for advancement. And uh, the time frame we expect this uh, system to last is about 10 years. So Canada Solution 4, um, this time the funding comes from the host country and security is provided by local police. Now, the local police providing security takes some of the uh, pressure off the national uh, government of the host country and puts a little bit more of it onto the municipalities or smaller townships. But it does open up more funding to go to things like shelter, which once again will be permanent, and uh, integration. So once again, full societal integration. So there's programs in place that allow refugees to attempt to uh, get jobs that have some semblance of advancement. Uh, education will be threshold, which means that we will provide education to the refugees up until what is the US equivalent of a GED or our grade 12. As illustrated earlier. Um, after that point, though, the refugees are expected to uh, be on their own as far as getting into college goes. And uh, the time frame for the system should be about should be 15 years. Canada Solution 6, uh, the funding comes from the European Union, and the way we imagine that will work is that um, all countries in the European Union will provide some money into probably a large fund that they can then be doled out to each individual. So for this, this is a uh, much more long-term solution. So this, uh, so what the system actually provides is less expensive. For example, shelter will be tents in a refugee center. Now once again, this is only temporary. As uh, refugees start bringing in money, start getting their education, uh, hopefully they should be able to move into more permanent residence later on their own accord. Uh, the security provided again by local police force, once again, it's cheaper, it takes a lot of stress off the national government host country, and the education will be a threshold, so once again, GED is grade 12. Uh, and the integration this time, though, will be minimum wage jobs. So that means that what we focus on is getting them a job in general, whatever that may be. And from that point onwards, it is up to the refugees to kind of make their way in the country. So look for other jobs, look for advancement in the job they have, and uh, the time frame for this will be about 20 years. And once again, the uh, kind of less services offered by the system allows the system to last longer. Each of the solutions we are presenting to you today offers a unique attempt at reducing refugee radicalization within Yukon. One solution is very resource intensive on the United States, another resource intensive on the host country, and the third provides for longevity without exactly being a resource drain on any all of these solutions do allow for the refugee to gain a sense of belonging and purpose within the local community, which we believe is essential in our fight in reducing refugee radicalization.